welcome back. To ease into things, let's walk through the same example as is in the Andy Field textbook. We have a data file with ratings that participants made based on someone's picture. Participants rated the Facebook profile pictures uh, attractiveness, coolness, fashionableness, and glamorousness because psychology. The person whose profile picture it was also has a score on narcissism. So Field is looking at how narcissism relates to how others scored the person on these four traits. So we'll take a look at the data. It's a .dat file and it is tab separated. So we'll open it up. And then just kind of click through because all the defaults are for tab separation. And here's our data in Excel. So we can see a few things. We see that each participant has made four different ratings on the four different traits. We see that each of these ratings is either the integer one, two, three, four, or five. And we see that the rating style variable is in a string or language. So that'll be a factor that's in words. Don't have to worry about the program confusing that with a continuous variable. And then on a continuous scale with far more values, we see the narcissism scores of the person whose picture is being rated. So let's get to working with this in R. I think last time we opened with uh, clicking directly on the icon, so let's open it from R this time. Set the working directory first of all. So there's my working directory. I have to make sure I call the package. Yeah, ggplot2 on the roster, so we'll do ggplot2, and I don't think we're using any other packages, so that's all we need. And now I'm going to load the data up into an object called data, because that's about as creative as I'm feeling right now. So read.dlim, because as we saw, it is tab separated. Previously, we've had comma separated values, which is what I prefer, but it is a tab delimited so your command is delim and the file was facebook narcissism note case sensitivity dot dot. Let's see if it gives us an error message all right so far so good that means it found the file and now we say okay attach this data i'm going to use it attach this object grab it and then when i give you a command that will be what the command refers to that data object that I just made. All right, and we can even check this, see that it's there. Whoa, yep, all right. 776 cases, and looks roughly like what it did in Excel. So what Andy Field did was he put narcissism on an x-axis, and on the y-axis, he just had the different types of ratings that the individuals were making. Agreeableness, coolness, fashionableness, and glamorousness were on the y-axis. We will reproduce that plot. So data just refers to the object that we're using and ES uh, is short for aesthetic mapping, which you don't need to know, I guess. R total was the name of the variable. Uh, so that's our X and EY was just called rating. Double confirm that. Good. So that created the graph, and then I can get R to show it to me. Graph. There it is. There's nothing on my graph because in ggplot we graph with layers. This is the first layer. This gives us our template, and if we like this template, then we can fill it in with information. So, for example, I might add points. Geom point, and it specifies. Let's just put some points up there. So this is what Field has as his first graph. It's hideous. It shows what we were after, though, which is the fact that higher narcissism does relate to higher ratings. Because we have lower ratings, one it would be the lowest rating you could give on you know, coolness or attractiveness, and five would be the highest. And as people's narcissism scores increase, uh, the individuals rating them tends to also increase their scores of these things. But of course we have all four factors 
lumped together here. So attractiveness, coolness, fashionableness, and glamorousness are all indistinct. They're all just black dots and you can't really tell and there's a lot of overlap. We'll get to that later. For now, let's change a couple things that we can. And let's start with the basal layer here. Let's start with the gray. I don't like the gray. We have a graph object and let's change it to a black and white theme because that's the only command I can remember off the top of my head. <gasps> but look, it made our dots disappear. Well, that's because we put a back layer over a front layer, so it's covered now. So what we need to do is we need to get our geome point back. Plus, not that it's that pretty, but that's what we're using. There's our dots again. So we got rid of the gray, hooray, and we added geometric points. And while we're here, we could add some labels. Note that I'm using the up arrow to just uh, access my last command, so I don't have to type as much. It also means I can do things the less efficient way because it makes the less efficient way more efficient. It's kind of fun. Uh, rating score? Rating score. So we're just putting some labels. This is how you do that. Narcissism. And a title overall, we'll call it Ratings and Narcissism. Sure, why not? Okay, and I think that's the only bracket I need to close off. See, look at that. We have labels now. This is the title and your access labels. So that's not nothing, uh, but of more interest is revealing whether any particular type of rating was immune or susceptible to this relation of higher narcissism predicting increased scores. So let's start a new graph with this info. First, we'll save this one. How do we save a graph? Well, I'm sure you could copy and paste with, what do we save as a meta, save as a bitmap? We don't want a bitmap. The way to do it uh, in ggplot is ggsave, ggsave, whoops, yep, graph dot, and I like pngs. I don't think they're as efficient as JPEGs. You could also do JPEG if you want. Uh, I like PNGs. And if I recall correctly, you need quotes, right? There we go, saving. All right, good, so it saved it. If you would like proof, let's check it out. So, because it'll save to the working directory, and right now my working directory is just the desktop. Did it save it? Oh, yay, look, graph.png, here it is. It's wonderful. All right, publication worthy graph. Moving on, let's make graph number two. Let's make it bigger, prettier, and and whatever else we want to make it. So actually, let's just start from scratch and let's call it graph two. So, so far everything is the same, but what we're going to add is an aesthetic mapping to the points. So rather than just have empty brackets here, we're going to add an aesthetic mapping and we're gonna say color. I think it's the Canadian slash British spelling of color equals rating type, which was the name of our discontinuous four option uh, variable and because we have so much overlap we're also going to jitter things I th think that's probably the best option because we don't have a lot of room so we'll just jitter jitter make sure that uh, it uses the least amount of room possible jitter so that no dots are behind each other so we can see every observation should reapply our labels Okay, very good. So we hit enter and we have graph two. Now let's just replace graph one, which is here, with graph two. So we have a few things that R is going to fill in for us, like what colors the dots become, or how specifically the dots are jittered so that you can see them all. It's doing a lot of thinking for us, and let's see how it did. There we go. Our nice, super pretty plot. So red is attractive, green is cool, 
blue is fashionable, and purple is glamorous. A few things stand out. It seems like three is the most commonly scored value. It looks like all rating categories, so attractive, cool, fashionable, and glamorous, all have the relation. Cool might have a weaker relation because of those few high scores associated with relatively lower narcissism scores. These green dots up here. But this is clearly a superior graph just by the jittering alone because you can see how many cases are represented. But everything you see can be manipulated, changed, made colorful. I'm going to switch to a white themed background because I don't like the gray. There we go. Now this is save worthy. GG save. And we called it graph two and I want a PNG. So I say PNG and I forgot the quotes again. There we go. And did it save it? Yeah, there's my other picture in all of its glory. More fancy plottings of data and distributions to come. Stay tuned.